Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well we had a question, it was a good question, we've done similar things before. Somebody was asking about sliding a blurb module in over an image. It's really easy to do and it's a nice little effect. So we've got three images at the top here when I hover over. We're going to have a little blurb module slide in from the side there. Really easy to do and if people are mousing around your site it's going to get their attention pretty quickly. We've done similar things in the past using a bit of coding. We're going to do this today with no coding at all. We're going to just use the inbuilt features of the Divi theme and it's really easy. So let's get started. I'm going to enable my Visual Builder. OK, I'm going to go down and I'll simply add a row below. A little green button there. I'm going to add three. Obviously, you put in whatever you want. Divi comes as standard with all these modules. If you've got WooCommerce installed, they've got another dozen or so plugins to help you sell your products. They wanted a blurb module today. Here's a blurb module. One of my favorites because you get to use an icon and they've just upped the icon set to include Font Awesome. So there's a lot of them. OK, put out whatever content you want to put in here. Here's the title. Put in whatever you want for your content. I'll delete a little bit of this because you're probably going to have different amount of text in your little blurb modules or whatever it is you're trying to do here. And we're going to give it a fixed height so you can have different amounts of text and the image will still say the, stay the same size. OK, so we've got our content and our header. Let's go down to image and icon. I'm going to use an icon rather than an image. And like I say, they've hugely expanded this now. If you want to look at them all, hit the little button right here and it'll give you a pop out view. Um, I'm just going to do a simple search. And there's plenty to choose from here. Let's use that one. OK, and as you can see, that's popped that in there. All right, well, let's style this a bit now. While we're on the content tab still, I'm going to go down to the background. If you want your module to link somewhere and you want to take them, your visitors somewhere when they click on it, you can go into the link here and you can link the title and the whole module separately if you want to. If you just want to link the title, put your link in there. If you want the whole module anywhere they click, click on the module to link, just put it in here. And as always, best practice, if you're linking to your own site, leave it in the same window. If you're going off site to another site, open it in a new tab so yours stays open. OK, I'm going to go down to background just underneath here. I'm going to give it a white background, the same as our page here. But I'm actually going to click right in the white field here. I'm going to bring the opacity down just a little bit so that when I put an image behind, we've got a hint of that image and we can see what's going on there. So I'm going to take it down a little bit and we can readjust it later on if it's too much or too little. Let's move on to design now. I'm not going to spend too much time on design image and icon. Let's make that icon blue. I'm not going to give it a background color. You can do if you want to there. Top's fine. I want mine about 50 picks. Not quite as big as it is there. If you want to, you can put a border around it. Um, if we roll down a little bit, here's image border styles. Let's give it, say, two picks. As you can see, it's come in there. I'm going to make it blue. I'm going to kind of round it by giving it a 50 pixels or something up here. Just put the 50 in, it'll put the pixels for you. If you've got the chain linked, it'll do all four at once. Now we just need to add a bit of padding to make that look how we want it. And down here we've got padding. Let's try 15 top and bottom. And let's give it 10 left and right, see what that looks like. Yeah, it's close enough. Might not be a perfect circle, but it's close enough for me. All right, let's roll on down. Here's our text. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to pop it all in the middle. I'm going to go down a little bit more. My title text, I'm going to make semi bold. And let's make it blue also. Now I just need to put a bit of padding around because else our text is going to be touching the sides when we put our image in there. So let's go in and for the time being, I'm going to go to spacing. And I'm going to give it 30 pixels all around. We'll be adjusting this in a minute to get our hover effect going. 
Again, just put the 30 in, it'll put the picks in for you. Hit the chain, it'll do the opposite side for you. Great. Okay, well let's shut up spacing. I'm gonna go into sizing just above and I'm gonna give this a fixed height of 400 picks. So in the height, I'm just gonna put in 400. And there we go. It's pushed the bottom stuff down a little bit. But it, what that means by doing this is no matter how much text you've got in here, this will always be 400 pixels high if 400 pixels is enough to contain the text that you want in there. Obviously you put in the height that you need. Okay, well let's save this now and let's put an image in the background. And common to most hover effects with images and text, we're gonna put the image in the actual column that, it, that our blurb module is sitting in. So let's go into our green tab for the row. Here's our three columns, one, two, three. We're working on the first column going to go in there and add whatever images or image it is you, you want you've got color gradient image or video I'm going to go for an image now just pop that one in as you can see you've got a hint of it in the background there I might like to see just slightly more of that image in the background just the priority really is being able to read the text itself so just make sure you've you're able to read the text clearly okay while we're in this column what we're actually going to do with our blurb modules we're going to slide it to the side over here when we're not hovering on it and when we are hovering on it we're going to pull it back over here and to make sure that we can't see it once it slides over there in our column we want to go to the advanced tab down to visibility and we're going to change the overflow to hidden so anything that overflows or flows out of our little column there which this is going to do when we push it over will not be seen okay we should be good for our column there let's go back into our little blurb module now you may find if you give them fixed height and various positionings that your actual to get into your little blur module the dark tab is hidden it might be over here which it will be when we add some crazy margins in a minute if that's the case hit your little purple button you can go down to this little icon on the left here and you can get to everything in wireframe mode so if you have that problem just go to wireframe mode all right well let's go back into our little module here and I'm going to pull that background white color down just slightly so we can see a little bit more of it so we're going in the background, click on the color. Here's our opacity. There we go. I think that's going to work quite like that. And let's now position our actual blurb module where we want it. So to do that, I'm going to go to design. I'm going to go down to spacing again, and we're going to use some crazy margins. I'm going to give it a margin on the left of minus 500 so that what's that that's going to do is pull our blurb module 500 picks over to the left so it's negative 500 picks as you can see it sort of dragged it over there but our content spread out because it's over here now to counter that what I've got to do is uncheck the chain here because I want to give it 500 picks padding on the right now the reason we're giving it padding on the right, what that's going to do is it's going to push that writing over here. But what it also means is because we've got so much padding here, we can activate our hover effect by putting our mouse on the padding and bring it all back when we want to. Now that may sound crazy, but I'm sure you'll see what I'm doing in just a moment. So I'm going to give this 500 on the right. And as you can see, or as you can't see, the text has disappeared. So let's go over, and this is common to most Divi modules. If you hover over the dark writing here in any module, some icons will appear. If there's an arrow, click on it, and you can set a desktop state, which is the regular state when the mouse is not on it, and a hover state, which obviously is when the mouse is on it. I'm gonna do the same for the margin up here. I'm gonna bring that up. And we're gonna flip it around a little bit. So let's go to desktop state. And that's exactly how we want it at the moment. We'll change that background color, but we can't see any writing because everything is way over here, minus 500. So on the hover state, we want to bring it back. So I'm going to click hover on here 
I'm going to change that back to 30, which will bring it back where it was when I do the margin at the top. And this, the minus 500, now wants to be zero. So it's back where it should be, back where we are. So on desktop state, we've now got this. And when we hover our mouse over it, we're going to have this. Fantastic. Well, that works great. The only other thing is you can slow down or speed up the timing that it slides in by going to your advanced tab of the blurb here. Go down to transition. I'm going to slow mine down to maybe half a second or even three quarters of a second, whatever works for you. 700 mils that'll do. Don't want any delay, want it to happen as soon as the mouse hits it. Speed curve I tend to use for these things is ease in, ease out. These are all slightly different. Some will work better than others in certain situations, so check them out. But for most of these hover effects, I like the ease in, ease out. Great. Well, if we've done everything correctly now, save our changes. Save the page changes. We'll exit the Visual Builder. OK, I see something that I've forgotten to do right here. Our image is there, but it's kind of whited out because it's still got that white background. If I hover over it, our blurb's going to come in. But I just want to see the clear image there. So let's get that corrected. Well, let's debug this, as they say. OK, well, let's go down. There's our little module. And as you can see, I can't, the actual little tab's not there. So let's go to our front wireframe mode right here. There's our little blurb module. And what I wanted to do is go down to that background there. And when we're not hovering over it, so we need to bring up the hover state again. Little arrow. For the desktop state, I don't want any background at all. So I'm going to go in there. I'm going to pull the opacity all the way down. Or you could just hit the little transparency button right down there. Then for the hover state, we want that white color with just a little bit. of opacity so we can read the writing. So let's just have a quick look. We'll flip the, back to the regular state. So we've got a nice clear picture now. And when we hover over, our module is going to come back and white it out a little bit. Fantastic. And just to show you how easy it is to create another one once you've created one, we'll do exactly the same thing. What we can do, we'll save this. Let's go back to wireframe mode again. I'll simply clone this one, drag one of them over, doesn't matter which one because they're both identical. Go in, obviously change your icon and your title and your content. I'll just copy another line just to demonstrate that if we've got different lines of text, these will still be exactly the same height. Switch out whatever icon you want. I'll just put that in there for argument's sake. So we're all good with the actual blurb setting. Then we have to do the overflow hidden part on our actual column here. So we're in the second column here. I want to give it a background image that we want to use. I'll pop that one in. And then of course, you just want to hide any overflow. Visibility, overflow, hidden. And we should have another one now with computers. Let's just switch back to our regular mode. We'll save our draft. There's our new one there. Exit the Visual Builder. We'll roll on down. And there it is. We've got two of them. And there's our little blurb module sliding in just like that. I know some of these icons aren't obviously they're not square so you'd have to adjust your padding if you can use a circle around there unless you like these erratic shapes there so there you go guys there's how to make a slide in blurb module or image to blurb module on hover nice little effect really easy to do no coding so i hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful if you have please give it a thumbs up ring the bell comment share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.